Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. And in this series of episodes, we've been looking at some remarkable men who dedicated their whole adult lives to fighting for Polish independence and died just at the moment when they saw, or would have seen had they lived, Polish finally achieving the Polish independence they'd fought for. And I'm delighted to be in the studio to have with us, I'm delighted to have with in the studio today my guest Adam Starzynski, a colleague, an expert on all things Polish and historical. And we're going to get now, finally, to the love story we promised you. Adam, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And this great love story mm -hmm. from the prison yes. in, uh, in, in Warsaw. Yes, it has been promised in previous episodes. It has. Uh, we, um, we introduced uh, some of the main characters. Uh, in the previous episodes, we spoke about uh, Antoni Pajdak, uh, the father of the future bride, uh, who was a socialist leader uh, in the interwar era. Uh, took even more responsibility on his shoulders during the Second World War and was finally among the 16 Poles um, sentenced in the famous trial of the 16 uh, by the Soviet Union uh, as representatives of the Polish underground state. Um, his daughter, Wiesława Pajdak, um, this was a, a common feature of the Stalinist and communist system in general in Poland that uh, once a family member had become an enemy of, uh, of the state, uh, that sin was inherited by the entire family. Uh, and there wasn't much uh, one could do about it. Uh, however, it has to be said that uh, Wiesława, well, she was an innocent victim, but uh, she also played a part in, uh, in opposing uh, the Soviet Union and in conspiring uh, against it in, in, in the first years after they uh, took control of Poland. So uh, she could have been sentenced on her own, so to say, without her father's influence. But of course, of course it didn't strengthen her position, so to say. Uh, the other character uh, we mentioned was um, uh, Stefan Korboński, who was a leader of the Polish Agrarian Party. Uh, who had been smuggled out of Poland just as the Stalinist uh, repression intensified in connection with uh, the falsified election of 1947. And uh, one of the men who helped smuggle him out of Poland was a member of the Nationalist Armed Forces, the NSZ, um, one of these military underground organizations that had fought against the Germans and the Soviets uh, during the Second World War. Uh, this uh, Korboński managed to escape through Sweden to the US, but unfortunately Jerzy Śmiechowski, the soldier who had helped smuggle him out, ended up in cell 43 in the uh, Rakowiecka prison here in Warsaw, while uh, Wiesława Pajdak, uh, the daughter of Antony Pajdak, ended up in cell 42, so uh, next to each other. And uh, that is where they got, got to know each other in December 1947, as uh, Wiesława Pajdak had, had just been taken to her new cell. Uh, quickly she learned um, the 101 of a prison culture, you could say, in Poland. Uh, many of, uh, of the Poles had uh, learned a lot about it well, previously during the partitions during the 19th century, well, 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 when many political prisoners were taken, but also uh, during the Second World War. Uh, one of the key elements of uh, being in prison was uh, clandestine communication. Uh, this is, of course, an activity that goes on in a normal criminal uh, prisons today as well, uh, but it was also used by the polit political prisoners back then. It included everything from uh, passing notes to each other through sm some small cracks in, in doors, uh, whispering messages, but uh, another very popular um, method used was Morse code, and um, these prisoners uh, initially, um, Wiesława and Jerzy, uh, they started using Morse code by uh, knocking on the on the wall separating uh, their two cells. Uh, later on, when they were moved to uh, an another cell, uh, they would use Morse code uh, through light. Uh, they, uh, they 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 would have some kind of form that they could see out outside their own cell. And if one person shaded the light for a moment, they could send Morse code to each other by, by light and shade, so to say. Uh, so very, um, they were very MacGyver-esque, if I could <laughs> use that word. Uh, communication in prison was, was not easy. Uh, but when they got to know each other, it, it was Wiesława who uh, started the contact, uh, knocking to the other side, uh, who's there? What are you in for? 
and do you have any news about what's going on on the outside? Uh, she was taking a risk because uh, you never knew uh, the person sitting in the other cell could technically be an, uh, uh, a communist agent that had only been placed in the cell for a day or a week or uh, just to investigate and try of to course. find out these uh, secret organizations that were being formed on the inside. It could, it could also be an inmate who was afraid of uh, being exposed as a person that engages in secret communication and he could simply spill the beans and, uh, and um, inform on, on the person in the other cell. So she was taking a risk when she sent that first message. Instead, uh, she met her future husband. <laughs> so to summarize this uh, experience, you could say that um, the communication taking part or taking place in the Rakovetska prison or the Mokotov prison on the Rakovetska street uh, was incredibly dangerous, dangerous for all involved. Uh, if uh, discovered, um, the, the typical punishment would be that they would be sent uh, to a place uh, that the prisoners would call the closet. It was a very tiny space, uh, about a meter high, uh, only 30, 40 centimeters wide and deep. So it, it wasn't possible to stand up straight in there. Adam, as usual, the clock has defeated us. I'm going to have to stop you there, but we'll pick up the story next time. There we are. Yet again, time has defeated us, and I've had to interrupt Adam almost in mid-sentence. He'll be back next time on Poland Daily History to continue the story, and I hope you will join us. Thank you for watching.